All right, so you want to master the art of AI prompting, huh? It seems like everyone's talking about tools like ChatGPT these days, but you're not content with just scratching the surface, right? Yeah, it's like everyone's been given this super powerful tool, but they're not quite sure how to use it to its full potential. Exactly. We're going to break down the essentials of what makes a good prompt so you can get the most out of these AI tools. It's like having this high-performance race car, but not knowing how to shift out of first gear. Yeah. You want to learn to really take control. I love that analogy. Okay, so first things first, the task. The task is at the heart of any good prompt. It's the core instruction, what you're actually asking the AI to do. So, like, it's not enough to just kind of throw a vague request at it. Right. Think about it. If you asked a friend to help you with your homework but didn't tell them the subject or what kind of help you needed, they'd be totally lost. True. And the AI is no different. Exactly. It needs clear, specific instructions. So instead of saying something vague like, help me with history, you'd want to say, write a 200-word summary of World War II. Right. So it knows exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so that's the task. What about giving the AI enough information to actually work with? Ah, you're talking about context. This is where we provide the AI with the background, the setting, the details it needs to craft a relevant response. So like if we were giving a new intern a project, we wouldn't just hand them a task without any background information. Exactly. Going back to our World War II summary, let's say you need this for a 10th grade history project. Adding that little bit of context tells the AI to tailor its language and the level of detail accordingly. So it doesn't give us something way too simple or something too complex for the intended audience. Exactly. Context is about fine tuning the AI's output so it's appropriate for the specific situation. So it's like having a real dialogue with the AI, giving it the information it needs to understand what we're looking for. Okay, so we've got the task and the context. What's next? Examples. This is where we can actually show the AI what we're looking for. Oh, so it's like a cheat sheet. You could say that. It's like giving the AI a model to follow, a blueprint for the style, structure, or even the level of detail we're after. Hmm. So if we wanted the AI to write in a specific style, we could give it an example of writing that we like. Exactly. If we wanted that World War II summary to have a certain feel, we could add something like, like this. World War II, which began in 1939, involved global conflict on multiple fronts. Oh, I see. We're not just telling it what information to include, but also how to present that information. And the best part, you don't need to be an expert writer or historian to provide effective examples. You just need to find examples that embody what you're looking for. Okay, this is awesome. So we've got the task, the context, and the examples. What else do we need to consider? Now we get to put the AI into character. We're talking about persona, which is arguably the most fun and creative element of prompting. Persona. I like where this is going. It's about specifying a role or a character for the AI to embody. It's like casting an actor for a role in a movie. So instead of just spitting out dry facts, we could actually tell the AI to take on a specific voice. You got it. Let's say we want that World War II summary to be more engaging. We could instruct the AI to act as a friendly high school teacher explaining World War II. Oh, that's so cool. So instead of just a list of dates and battles, we might get something that sounds more like a lecture or a story. Precisely. The AI would adjust its language and tone to fit that persona, making the information much more relatable and interesting. So in a way, we're making the AI more versatile. It could be a historian one minute, a poet the next. It all depends on the persona we choose. That's the magic of prompt engineering. It's about taking control of the AI and directing it towards your specific goals. But we're not done yet. We still have two more essential elements to cover. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground already. Task, context, examples, and even persona. What else is there? Well, we've given the AI the information it needs and even a character to play. But now we need to think about the overall feeling. We need to think about tone. Tone. Okay. Yeah. I can see how that's important. Like you wouldn't want a chatbot responding to customer complaints with a bunch of emojis, right? Exactly. Tone is about shaping the emotional feel of the AI's response. It's about matching the language and style to the situation. So like if I was asking the AI to write a super serious email to a potential investor, I'd probably want to specify a more professional tone. Right. You wouldn't want it to sound too casual or flippant in that situation. But if you were asking it to write a birthday card for your best friend, then maybe a more playful and lighthearted tone would be better. So it's not just about the information. It's about how that information is actually conveyed. Yeah. I'm really starting to see how all these elements work together to create a really unique and tailored output. They do. 
And that brings us to our last essential element, which is all about how the information is presented. We're talking about format. Format. So like how the information is structured. You got it. Think right. of it like choosing the right container for a gift. You wouldn't put an expensive piece of jewelry in a big cardboard box, would you? No way. You'd want something much nicer, right? Exactly. So with AI, the format you choose should match the kind of information you're asking for. If you're asking for a list of resources for a research project, you might want to specify a bullet pointed list. Yeah, that would be way easier to read than a huge block of text. Right. But if you're asking the AI to write a short story, then maybe a traditional paragraph format would make more sense. Or even something like a screenplay format if you wanted a more visual output. Exactly. The key takeaway here is that the format should make the output easy to use, you know, for you. Think about how you're going to use the information and then choose the format based on that. So we've gone from the big picture, the task, all the way down to the nitty gritty details of how the information is presented. It's amazing how much control we actually have over the AI's output. And that's what prompt engineering is all about. It's about really understanding these tools and using them to your advantage. Okay, so we've learned about all these different elements, but I'm still not sure how to put them all together. It's like having all the ingredients for an amazing meal, but no recipe. Perfect analogy. Let's say you're a marketing manager and you're launching this new line of athletic wear. You want to use AI to brainstorm some catchy slogans. Okay, yeah, that's something I can wrap my head around. Here's how we could create a really awesome prompt. First, we set the persona. We could say something like, act as a creative marketing director with experience in athletic apparel. So we're not just relying on general knowledge. We're actually telling the AI to channel a specific type of expertise. Exactly. Next, we give it the task. So we might say, generate five unique slogans for a new line of athletic wear designed for yoga and Pilates enthusiasts. Okay, very clear and to the point. Now we add some context. We could say, the brand emphasizes sustainability, comfort, and inclusivity. So now we're really giving the AI a sense of the brand. Next up, examples. Let's give the AI a little inspiration. Something like, think along the lines of, Find your flow or move with intention. So we're guiding the AI towards a certain style, but not dictating exactly what the slogans should be. And finally, format and tone. Provide the slogans in a bulleted list using a tone that is inspiring, empowering, and slightly playful. Wow, that's a far cry from just asking the AI to come up with slogans. Right, right we've given it a clear task, context, examples, a persona, and even specified the format and tone we want. So it's like we've created a recipe for the perfect AI-generated slogan. You got it. And this is what mastering these six elements is all about. It's about moving beyond the basic prompts and really shaping the AI's output to meet your specific needs. This has been such an amazing deep dive. It really feels like we've just scratched the surface of what's possible with AI. And that's the exciting part. There's so much more to discover. As you experiment more with these different elements and start to combine them in new and interesting ways, you'll find you have more control over the AI than you ever thought possible. So listeners, don't be afraid to experiment. Try out different prompts, see what works, and most importantly, have fun with it. Remember, AI is a tool. And like any tool, its effectiveness depends on the skill of the user. So go out there, practice your prompting skills, and see what incredible things you can create. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into the world of AI prompting. Until next time, keep those creative sparks flying.